All right, guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Closer's Corner Podcast Live. My name is Greg Simpson, and as always, I am your host here today. And uh, again, this is our live version of the podcast that we do. We also host uh, an interview-style podcast with our top producing agents here at Outfast Realty. Uh, both these get uploaded to Spotify and Apple and anywhere you get a podcast uh, on your smart device and anywhere else. Um, uh, anywhere, basically, and that will get that always gets dropped on Monday mornings around 8 a.m. So you guys can watch it on your way to work or getting ready for work. Um, and so this version of the podcast is done as a question and answer session because again, I get a lot of people want to go to lunch with me and want to you know, pick my brain. And so what I do is I have you guys email me or DM me. If you want to email me, it's closerscorner at outfastrealty.com. I will get your stuff and I will compile them in a list similar to this. And we will kind of roll through some of the questions I've been asked as of recent. And I will answer them. And you guys can ask them live here as well in the comment section, wherever you are watching this today. Let me open up the chat so we can get all of those for you guys. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start rolling through some of the ones that have already been asked recently. Um, and one of the ones that is my favorite question that I've been asked a lot. And that is the worst business mistake I've ever made. And so this is actually, it's a couple of different decisions as a business owner that have been the worst ones. And, and this goes for pretty much any business out there and it is picking partnerships. Um, you know, I have amazing partners now um, between having, uh, you know, Jeremy Cloder as my business partner for five years, uh, Matt Kelsey now for going on two years, uh, yeah, Jeremy Griffin at Startup Street is now a partner as well. Um, these we all get, we all have the synergy that is required for a partnership. But I, we, I and we have picked terrible partnerships in the past too, that have totally derailed our entire businesses. Um, to give you an example of them, um, we partnered with these um, individual or this, these, this married couple from another country. Um, we will say, everyone will be, rename it, or remain anonymous today, um, but we picked them to help open up Outfast Construction many, many years ago now. I think it's been almost three, four years now. It has to be closer to four. And they were just the wrong partners. Um, they wanted to do it their way, even under the Outfast brand, and we're just like, no, it's not how this is gonna work. Their communi the communication didn't work. They, we just didn't have that synergy um, that is required. It seems like you have the synergy, and then when the bullets start flying, it's a disaster. Um, the second one was partnering with uh, a potential hard money lending partner to help open Deployed Capital Group, uh, which is our hard money lending division, and that was a disaster. Looked like it was gonna be great from the get-go. Everything was looking great. COVID happened and uh, personality conflict started to come through on that. Nothing, nothing against the guy himself. He just was not a good culture fit for us and what we were trying to do. Um, tried to rule with like an iron fist and that's just not how we run here. Um, and so that was, that, those were the biggest mistakes I think that we have made and I have made as partnerships and that's just two of them. Okay, I don't have, I, I could go on all day about bad partnerships and the stories I've heard from other people as well. Um, but you know, I feel like that has been, um, the biggest, uh, mistake that I have made in the past. That's the Oops. worst business mistake I've ever. Thanks. Yep. Um, and so how, how do you kind of get around how, uh, picking partnerships and well, the biggest thing is making sure that you guys have the exact same vision for your company, what you want it to look like one year from now, three years from now, five years from now. What mission do you guys have? What, what problem are you solving? What's the real reason you're trying to get into business in the first place? And, you know, I would say to make sure you vet those people's experience. And that was one of the things that has really screwed us in multiple different aspects is we just trusted their experience. They, they, they talk a good game, act a good game. And then when it comes down to performing, either they didn't have the experience that we expected you know, inspect what you expect, um, or when you've gone into partnerships with them and they, the bullets really start flying as the company is open and they show their true colors that the process doesn't work like they said it was going to work. The communication is not like they said it was going to be in closing a deal. Um, and so like, you've got to 
literally go through their process to see how they operate before you actually jump into business. So like, you know, we get to see all the pretty stuff on Facebook and Instagram and those people typically don't show the bad part. Um, I'm going to see this might hopefully, um, but, you know, I feel hopefully like it does that. that. Anyway, <laughs> love technology today. Um, good morning, Justin. Good to see you, buddy. Um, saying is like, make sure that you can inspect their actual processes and get real testimonials from people that have worked with them in the past. We found out that our hard money lending guy was our partner had actually never done a traditional hard money lend lending deal. It was all done as structured as joint ventures, not as a traditional mortgage note kind of thing and was flying by the seat of his pants and it just didn't work out. And then the personality conflict started coming out and it was just, it was a mess. And so we didn't inspect it. We didn't actually get testimonials from borrowers that did him on that to find out how he structured things. And the construction people, they had no experience in construction. They had experience in business. And they they talked to the game like they knew how they would be able to do it because they were hiring a coach. And the coach didn't actually have his general contractor's license even though he said he did. It was a mess. Like I could go on and on with stories, guys. So make sure you guys are asking your questions along the way, guys. Um, Yes, I do, Justin. I love technology. I love it and I hate it all at the same time. <laughs> um, so that was my biggest that was my biggest mistake. Um, when should you say no? Because we are in a society of yes, right now, all the time. Yes, right now, all the time. Microwave society. Guys, what is your peace of mind worth? What is your hourly rate? What is what are things that you guys need to start thinking to say no to? I'll give you an example. If someone asks you to you know, drop everything right now and go show them a house or go, you know, on a listing appointment and you're out, you're playing with your kids. And I would ask you, what's your priority? Is it playing with your kids or is it uh, catering to the needs of your client? That's your call. But like, it's your decision on when to say no. You have to literally write out what your priorities are so that you know when the something comes up that doesn't match your priority level or priority list in an order that you can say no. Uh, another mentor of mine said if it's not a hell yeah, when someone asks you to do something, either in business or in per your personal life, if it's not a hell yeah, like hell yeah, I'll go do that. Then the answer is no. So start thinking about when people ask you to go do things, if you really want to go do it, is it a hell yeah or is it an absolutely a no? All right. So that's a couple things. Let's see here. All right. Which one do I want to answer? <laughs> oh, this is a good one actually. Um, how do you know if you're making the right choices? <laughs> And that goes pretty deep, but I like that question because um, we never know sometimes if we're making the right choice. We sometimes just don't know. Um, and that's why I said it's kind of like doing a lot of due diligence on what, on what uh, thing you're trying to make a choice on. You know, uh, I ask this question whenever I interview uh, an agent that's brand new, getting their license. Why are you getting your real estate license? What's the driving force to want to get your real estate license? And this is obviously a real estate centered podcast. And so how do you know if you're making the right choice in getting your real estate license? Cause I have a lot of people who want to get into real estate investing, but they get their license and I ask them why, you know, what's the reason why? And some of them have good reasons and they have, they've made a good choice in that respect, but sometimes they don't know what they don't know. Um, and again, for those that may not know, I am not a licensed real estate agent or broker. I own a real estate brokerage and, and run, run about 80 something agents right now through this brokerage and whatnot. Jeremy is my partner in the business and he has the broker's license. Um, but like you don't have to have your license to be an investor. Clearly I am, you know, proof of that, but I will tell you guys that I believe that getting a real estate license is imperative to being a real estate investor. I think it's a very smart move. It's not required, but it, you know, you guys have to really do a lot of digging and a lot of soul searching. I know that term gets overused a lot, but you really have to start doing soul searching when you're deciding what things you are going to do. What, what are your goals? Like, what is your vision for yourself? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? So that will help guide your decision-making process. Again, going back to the saying no thing or the hell yeah, 
those are things that how you can guide your choices too because does it excite you does it get you does it get your blood pumping does it motivate you to go do things and if the answer is a no then it's a, then that's not the right choice to make right so but the thing is guys i want you guys to to totally understand um yeah that's i'll talk about that in a second justin good call or good point um there are going to be certain things that you don't like doing that you will still have to make the decision and the choice to do so um, not many people like cold calling or cold marketing in general, but it's just kind of the nature of the business, right? You know, but people also don't like networking events. Well, that's how you build relationships with people in real estate. That's actually the best way to build relationships with people is go to networking events. But a lot of people like I was 10, gosh, 15, holy shit. 15 years ago, I started doing networking. Maybe hang on. I got to think about that for a second. I'm 38. Yeah, dude, it has to be close to 15 years now that I've been networking in the relationships I have built through my networking, um, through organizations such as BNI and RGA and Chamber of Commerce and other things. Man, I just kind of a mind blowing thing of 15 years I've been doing this on that side. But again, the relationships that I have built from that have been paramount to our success. But I told the story the other night when I did our goal setting training here that when I would go, I went to my first ever BNI and I didn't realize I was going to have to stand up and do a public speaking 30 second infomercial about me and my business. I remember freaking the hell out. And I remember like literally shaking that I wasn't going to be able to get 30 seconds out. Now I've been going for, I don't know, probably, yeah, roughly uh, 20 minutes now uh, here and like it's nothing. And getting up and speaking at TV Rhea, getting up and speaking. Um, it, it uh, other re events across the country. It's just a, it's a natural progression, but like it is just required to do that. Sometimes I still don't like it, but it's a choice I make because I know that the outcome is going to result into us making. Uh... Hang on a second. Oh yeah yeah yeah, I remember that. So yeah, Justin's talking about how he's got he has to get his license to do wholesaling and investing in Illinois because it's required now. Meaning should have. Yeah, Justin, that's good. Justin says, "Come on, man! I <laughs> I met you in 2014 at a meeting. I should have buttoned up with a folder talking about five million in five years and how and, and he failed, but he has succeeded too. Absolutely, man! I love it. So, guys, if you don't have any other questions here, I'm going to roll out on this. Um, so, uh, <laughs> last week, you guys know I love technology. The uh, the clown of the week did not get done because it got played in the very beginning. But I'm gonna go and with the clown of the week, let's make sure, I wonder if this is gonna work this time. Let's see. I don't know if it is what it says it is. But since I didn't get to do the clown of the week last week, it's gonna be the same clown I was gonna do last week. So this week's clown of the week is still the CEO from Better.com, who is now taking a leave of absence to go reflect on his stupidity firing his workforce. Uh, I actually haven't checked. Has he gotten fired yet? Has he resigned yet? I don't think so. But bro, you should. Uh, because if you guys haven't been following it, I told you guys a couple weeks ago that he fired like 9% of his entire staff uh, due to uh, some bullshit reasons. But he did it on a Zoom meeting and said, if you were one of the unlucky people that is here on the Zoom meeting, you are getting laid off right before Christmas. He did it really cold. It wasn't cool after they had merged with a smack to basically go public and raise a shit ton of money. And then guess what happened? He, spout, he did that. Then he went to spout it off, made it even worse than I originally knew he was doing in, in some private channels on, on social media. And his three of his top three PR executives all resigned because of it because they were so embarrassed. And then he uh, apologized and then he was basically forced to take uh, uh, time away from the company. So I'm glad to see that things kind of worked themselves out, but you saw are still the kind of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys uh, next week. On the, actually, I won't see you next week on the Closers Corner Podcast Live because it's Christmas Eve. Won't be doing it live, uh, but we'll be back in the new year. So we'll see you guys then. Uh, and back. Hey,